Hi everyone, happy belated new year. Uh, after a very brutal winter in the, in the northeast here, it's finally starting to turn nice. I've finally been able to get out into the garage where I'm not freezing. So on that note, I'm going to be showing you a very quick and easy tutorial about how to make a rig uh, to make male rings in a very fast and very economical way. The reason I'm doing this one is that even though, yes, you can go buy rings in uh, online and everything like that, the problem is, is those rings are usually going to be in one size. Here, I'm going to be showing you a way to make uh, a rig that you can produce different size rings because as an artist or someone that wants to create different a male that have different size rings, you would probably want something like that. Uh, this is going to be relatively quick and easy. Um, you, you probably can even do it in your house if you have a workshop in your side your house. Uh, so, on that note, let us start. Let us start. Uh, you're going to be needing a few items in the process here. You're going to be needing an iron rod, uh, some wood. Uh, preferably like a 2x4 or 2x6, uh, a skill saw or just a, a, um, also a screw slash uh, drill gun and 16 gauge wire, a hacksaw and, and whatever else. Also you're going to be needing probably some ear protection on this one too again. Always remember safety's first. Alright, so you have your wood. I already made a mark here as you can see. Uh, more or less, this is a, where I'm going to cut it is at the 20 inch mark. Um, I find that to be the best for myself. Doesn't mean that you should do it, but it gives you enough length. So you, it gives you enough length so that you can have a nice long coil. So once you get your mark, get your skill saw. So you cut your piece, right? So you want to, after you cut the piece, whatever pieces you have left over, which would actually work quite well, those are going to be your legs for this for the uh, for the spinner. So what you want to do first is get the rod that you're going to use. Basically, mark where you want it. You don't want it too low, so because then you're going to have a hard time moving it. You, you don't want it too, so you want a little. You want it a little higher. Then basically just mark it. Okay. Now that you marked it, get your drill, and you're going to start drilling. All right. As you can see, went through one. And then went started going through the other one. I always place them on top of each other so then I don't have to be judging about which which one is higher and lower than the other one. So once you have the marks on them, you just keep going until you go through the four pieces. Voila, you got them. All right, so you want to get your rod and make sure that they fit. As you can see, it's a little tight, but trust me, with the constant churning of it, it's going to eventually bore itself through and actually make the uh, the holes a lot more, a lot easier to move around in. Here's your rod. This is a three-eighth rod. You can go as small as a. I think I have one that's 7 sixteenths to an inch if you want. It depends on how big you want the rings. So it really doesn't matter. But, so. but what you need to do is basically buy, you can buy one of these at Ace or any other hardware store rel relatively cheaply and that's how it goes. All right. Um, the thing is though is that it is too long for the wood. So what you do is you measure it up against what the wood is, which is a bit, which is 20 inches. This is probably a little bit longer. You do want it maybe two or three inches longer than the wood. I'll show you why. All right, so you do the mark, get your hacksaw, and you start hacking at it. 
So you cut off the piece. All right? You want to hold on to this. I'll show you in a few minutes why. All right? But before you take this off, make sure that you have this tight in the vice grip. Get a punch. All right? You go down, you can go down go down a few a little bit. All right? You find where you like it. You line it up. Give it a couple good not hard wax, but a couple simple little taps first. Okay? The reason is is that because it's cylindrical, it's if you hit it too hard, it's just gonna slide off and your and your punch and your mark is gonna be all it's gonna be all skewed up and screwy. So once you've got a good hit, see, like I said. Okay, you wanna Alright, you wanna make sure that the you got a decent hole you got a decent mark. You can always go for a little bit of a bigger punch once you have the initial initial mark. Okay? Okay, and I'll show you the reason for it. <clears throat> this is where you're going to be drilling a hole so that you can put the wire in so you can do the coils. All right, but I'll show you in a few, I will show you that in a bit. <clears throat> so once you make your mark on the rod, you want to start, you want to drill a hole through it. The reason you want to drill a hole through is so that the wire can go through and you can start turning it. Um, as you can see, I already actually started drilling a hole but using a, um, a battery powered screw gun. Um, and I found out that it doesn't work too well because the batteries start dying on you. So let's go back to the old fashioned way and that is an, a drill press. Or if you have electrical electrical screw gun or whatnot, use that. So. But the nice thing is though, now that I do actually do have a hole to begin with, I'm not too afraid that it's going to, that when I start drilling, it's going to go back and forth because I can't get a hold on where I put, I put the hole with the punch. So actually it's not a bad idea maybe to start using a, electric, um, a battery drill gun to slowly but surely drill a hole through it and then finish it off with the, with the um, actual power. There you go. We got a nice hole right through the center. All right. So you got that. Now we got to go on to the next part. Now you're going to need a small piece of wood. Um, I suggest, like again, with the original initial piece of wood, if you have a little extra spare or something that you cut off, you grab it. All right. So what you want to do next is make two holes on opposite sides of it. You don't want to. You don't want to go completely through, but you want to make it deep. Okay, so you have the piece of wood, two holes on each end. Now you want to grab your metal rod that you've been working on. Make sure you don't put the hole and see if, if they fit. If it's a little tight, that's actually pretty, that's actually good. So now you got your rod in there. Actually, this piece I could definitely cut a little bit shorter. What you want to do is have one that's got a, you, get, you have a good handle on. All right? So if you're happy with the holes that you've, that you've drilled, grab some wood glue and put a couple of dabs in there. Yeah, or a little bit more than a few dabs. All right, so once you get those in there, you grab your rod and you insert them. You might want to, all right, so now you just, now that those are set in there, you're just gonna have to let it sit. I would suggest put a piece of paper underneath it so it doesn't stick to your, to your work area, okay. 
Make sure that they're pretty tight and they're straight because that's going to be very important. Put a couple of pieces of metal or what, whatever you have floating around so that it all stays even so that it doesn't fold, so it doesn't be too tall or too short on you. All right, so now you just got to let that sit for a day. As you can see, you just got to let that sit for a day or two, for a day. Let it, let it just sit and let it dry out for you. And like I said, put a couple pieces of metal or wood or whatever you have around so that everything stays relatively straight and even. All right. While that's sitting there, we can finish up the rest of the rig. <clears throat> okay. We're in the final stretch of making our male rig here. So what you want to do now is get those pieces that you drilled your holes in earlier and put them on the ends. All right. So after that, make a mark about where they are. So you know where they are. Now, what you want to do next, get your drill gun with again. And make a couple of pilot holes. Shit. Alright, so the battery died on that. So what we go on to is we're going to go back to the what we're going to go back to is the drill press. Like I said, you're going to start first thing you want to do is make let's make Now you got your, your pilot holes. The reason you, you re, you're probably asking, why do I have pilot holes? Well, you, as you can see, some of the wood is already cracked in the center, cracked here. So if I decide to try and just drill a hole right through here, those cracks are going to expand and basically crack this whole entire this whole entire thing and be, make it useless. So at least with pilot holes, you can I can drill the hole right through and not worry about that. All right. So you have your pilot holes, like I said earlier. Now get your screws. Go through, stick it through, actually meet up this piece to the wrong way. Sorry. What you want to do, meet up the pieces like that. Put your screw through, and then just screw this piece into here. There you go. You have your settled rig right now. All right. Well, because we can't really use this one because the other because the actually it's still drying the other piece of it. I will show you. My older version. As you can see, no frills, no nothing. This is, but this is base. This create can help create number of coils relatively fast and quickly. All you have to, and that is going to be the next part of this. I'm going to show you how to make rings, or let me rephrase that: make coils, which can be turned into rings. And there you go. <clears throat>